Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT official guide 2024. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure that this book is in front of you when we are working together. Today is uh, lesson number 21, day number 21, and we are on page number 91. Page number 91 has six problems. We're going to do three today and then three tomorrow. Number 111, 112, and 113 is what we're going to do. Problem number 111, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. I'm going to read it to you, then I'm going to get out of the frame. You're going to do it yourself, you're going to pause the video, do it yourself, and then we'll compare your work with the work that we'll do together. Actually, problem number 111 is a very straightforward, simple problem. Here we go. It says that we are given a partial result of a survey. It says the table that we see there, the table shows partial result of a survey. Now this part that you see there, this is not something that appears in the book. That's not something that's going to appear in the exam. This is something I'm telling you. There's their way, there's their way of saying that it's not going to add up to 100%. If you were to add up these percentages, it's not going to add up to 100%. No need to freak out, no need to be alarmed, we know it's a partial result. The question is, based on these partial results that we have from the survey, here's the question. What fraction was influenced, what fraction was influenced either by coupon or displays? So we are told that we took a survey and we asked people, why did you buy this product? 35% of people said, I saw the ad for the product. 22% of people said that I got a coupon in the mail, so that's why I bought it. 18% said I saw a display in the window and 15% said I tried the sample and I liked it so I bought it so I bought more of it go ahead do it yourself as I said it's a very straightforward very babyish problem what fractions was influenced either by coupons or displays there are the coupons and these are the displays if you add them together we get 2 and 8 that's a 0 so carry one, so that's 40. There you go, that's 40. Let's, let, let's add up to see what the total percentage was of these four categories. So again, 2 plus 8 is going to make it 10. That's a 5 and that's a 5, that's 20. So 0, carry 2. 2 plus 3 is 5. 5 plus 2 is 7, 8, 9. It looks like it's 90%. That's why it's a partial result because it doesn't account for the remaining 10%, but it doesn't matter. We are, we are asked to work with this thing. So it's 40 out of 90. The answer is 4 ninth. What fraction was influenced either by coupons or display? The answer is 4 ninth. Let's do number 112. One twelve, on the other hand, would require some work on your part. Pause the video and do it yourself properly. 112. We are told that 65% of employees, 65% of the employees, we are told are full time. They are full time workers. We are further told that 5,100 uh, 5, more full time than part time. We are told that this firm. There's 5,100 more full-time people than it does part-time people. The question is very straightforward. The question is very simple. The question simply is, how many total employees do we have? That's all. How many employees does this firm have? Go ahead, pause the video, do it yourself. So here we go, we have two unknowns, the number of full-time people and number of part-time people. Since we have two unknowns, we need two independent equations. The first equation is very straightforward, the first equation is very logical. The total number of employees that we have has to add up to the full-time people and the part-time people. But they go on to tell us that the number of full-time people that we have, number of full-time people that we have, is 5,100 more than part-time. So if we have p number of part-time people, if we were to add 5,100 to it, 
that will give us the number of full time people. Let's put this equation in here. So full time people is P plus 5100 plus the part time and that is full time. What else do we know? There is one more, there is one more bit of information. Let's first simplify first this thing. So P plus P is 2P plus 5100 has to equal total. What else do we know? We also know that 65% of employees are full time. If 65% are full time, that implies that 35% must be part time. What else can it be? So instead of looking at this equation, as, instead of looking at this equation as P and P being numbers, let's put in here the, the appropriate fraction. P is 35%. P is 35%. Let's express, let's express, in other words, P equals 35% of the total, which means P must equal 0.35T. That's what we're going to put here. And this P is 0.35, two times rather, two times 0.35 t plus 5100 must equal t. Let's raise this thing because it's getting too crowded. That's it. We're almost done. Subtract uh, 2 times 2 times 0.35 would be 0.7. Subtract 0.7 from both sides. We'll end up with 0.3 t equals 5100. And now it is getting too crowded. I'm going to continue on the top. Or we can do it here. This equation right here. 0.3t must equal 5100. Let's multiply both sides by 10. That tells us that 3t must equal 51 times 1000. Divide both sides by 3. If I divide both sides by 3, you will see that 3 goes into 51. Or if you don't know that, if you did not know that 3 goes into 51 17 times, then we'll have to do it out. Then we'll have to do it out. Like a baby. That's fine. But you should be able to recognize, you should be able to recognize right away that 51 is a product of two prime numbers, 3 and 17. 51 is not a prime number. If you divide both sides by 3, 5 is made up of 1, 3. After we take away 3 from the 5, we have a remainder of 2. 2 goes and joins the 1, becomes 21, and 21 is made up of 7 3. There you go, voila. The question was, how many employees does the firm have? The answer is, the, the, the firm must have had 17,000 people. That was number 112. Let's do 113, which you see in the next column. I need the room. Let's, let's erase this thing. We need the room. We are told that cost of removing P percentage of pollutant. The town has decided to clean a certain pond that, that is in the, in the in the public park. The town decided it's time to clean the pond. They hired a, a, a consultant or prospective uh, cleaner, and the cleaner tells us, tell, told the town that the cost of cleaning P percentage of the pollutant would be this: a hundred thousand times the P over hundred minus P. That's what they're going to go by. The question is this. How much more would it cost to remove 90% of the pollutant as opposed to only 80%? So 
So town is a choice as to how much they want to spend the money. And this is what we're dealing with. One more time, I'm going to read the problem to you, then I'm going to get out of the frame. The cost of removing P percentage of pollutant is this. C equals 100,000 times P over 100 minus P. The question is, how much more would it cost to remove 90% of the pollutant as opposed to only 80%? Go ahead, you do it yourself. Okay, here we go. Let me first fix this thing before I, before I lose it. So, let's see what we can do. Let's first look at the cost of 90%. So we're going to use this symbol, C with the subscript 90. That would mean the cost of removing 90% of the pollutant. And then we'll figure out the cost of removing only 80% of the pollutant. And then we'll have our answer. How much more does it cost to remove that extra 10% of the pollutant? So the formula is this, 100,000 times P, which in our case is 90, because we are removing 90% of the pollutant. And the bottom we have 100 minus 90, 100 minus 90 is 10. So that's quite straightforward. That goes quite straightforward. It's just 9 times 100,000 is going to cost us $900,000 if we wanted to remove 90% of the pollutant. Does that mean that to remove 80% of the pollutant, it will cost us $80,000? Because 90,000 costs 900,000? Let's find out. Not 80,000, I meant 800,000. Let's find out. The cost of removing 80% of the pollutant. Let's not do it here. I'm going to remove this thing because it's getting, getting crowded. 100,000 times, this is 80. So this is 80. This is, this is this P right here. 100 minus P, which is 20. There we go. 2 is going to, 0 is going to drop out, 2 is going to go with the 8, 4, and now we have 4 times 100,000, that's 400k. In other words, in order for us to be able to remove up to 80% of the pollutant from the pond, it will cost only $400,000. But if you want to go extra 10%, from 80% to 90%, the cost goes up astronomical, the cost goes up by half a million dollars. How much more? How much more would it cost to remove 90% of the pollutant as opposed to 80%? The answer is half a million dollars. It will cost $500,000. I'm curious, based on this formula, how much do you suppose it will cost to remove all the pollutant from the pond, 100%? Let's look at it, shall we? I'm curious. What do you think? So the top is simply, 100,000 times 100, because we want to remove all the pollutant. And in the bottom we had 100 minus P. And P is a percentage that we are removing. 100 minus P in this case would be 0. 100 minus, 100 minus 100 is 0. So the answer to this question, how much would it cost to remove all the pollutant? The answer is, there is no amount of money on the planet which will enable you to do that because anything divided by zero is infinity. If you tell the guy, this guy who's going to do the cleaning of the pond, if you tell the guy, we would like to remove all the pollutant, 100% of the amount, his answer would be, it can be done. It is physical impossibility. There is no amount of money that you can pay me, which will enable me, which will allow me to remove all the pollutant. On that note, okay? We'll meet again tomorrow. Bye now.